¿Qué tal queridos amigos de OBM? Sí, este segmento siempre se caracteriza por lo divertido, por las risas, por lo distendido, pero... Hoy queremos hablar de algo muy importante, porque son muchos los hispanos viviendo dentro de Estados Unidos y en el último tiempo ha habido muchos derrumbes de edificios. Por eso es importantísimo que estés informado de cómo está el lugar donde vivís, cómo está ese edificio, qué antigüedad tiene, cómo están las estructuras y la condición de seguridad, por el bien tuyo y el de los demás. Así que toma nota de todo lo que vamos a estar hablando hoy para que sepas cómo ayudar a los demás. Acordate que vos sos un agente de cambio, un agente de fe y puedes cambiar el lugar donde vivís. Welcome to sharing your vision. My name is Elaine Enriquez and we have a very special program for you today. We also want to share this vital information with our Hispanic community. Today we have a professional engineer, Executive Vice President of the Falcom Group, Mr. Sinisa Collar. Welcome, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. Likewise. Now, you are the Executive Vice President of the Falcom Group. Tell us about this specific group of professionals and what is the work that they do. Yes, thank you very much. So the Falcon Group uh, is an engineering consulting company and the work we do is we service uh, condo associations and HOAs. Basically, we work with existing buildings for most part. Uh, assisting them throughout the life of the building. So we are helping the condo associations, HOAs, with uh, any type of a painting work, uh, waterproofing, concrete restoration, uh, roofing, or you know, electrical and mechanical, such as generator replacements, cooling towers, and, and so on and so forth. So the, the work we do is geared towards the condo associations, existing buildings, and helping those communities you know, have uh, their engineering the needs uh, fulfilled and met during the life of the property. This is so important. Let's talk about infrastructure, especially what took place in Surfside. Sure. Well, uh, what took place in Surfside is still unknown be besides the obvious. Uh, the fact is that the, that the building collapsed and uh, with everything being said, the buildings obviously are not meant uh, to collapse. So this is definitely a tragedy, you know, first and foremost, but uh, for us professionals, the engineers, a, a big surprise. Uh, there is a, a lot of information flowing around and, and people are looking at different aspects of this. Um, at this point, the only thing we can do is allow and let professionals that are engaged by different parties uh, come to their conclusion after the investigation is, is complete. But it's definitely a surprise. Mr. Collar, we have some pictures here on the video wall. And one of the questions that you are probably asked the most, and we will also ask as well, how could this happen? Oh, this, as I said, should not happen. Uh, uh, and uh, there are multiple uh, safeguards put in place to prevent this. Uh, from happening, starting with the uh, design factors and aspects once you design a building like this, then, uh, uh, you know, through construction and quality control as we build the buildings, and then through maintenance of the, of the buildings and making sure the buildings are properly uh, maintained. Uh, with that being said, the, one of the processes put in Florida for that purpose, uh, or not necessarily in Florida, in Miami-Dade and Broward counties is uh, 40 and 50 year restification. That is the process that is meant to ensure to, you know, to the greatest possible extent that buildings, uh, old buildings are properly maintained and safe for, for occupancy. With that being said, this should not have happened. Why it has happened? Uh, it's, but for now, it's all speculation. I, I know that everybody wants an answer to that question. And believe, believe me, us engineers, we also want an answer to that question. As much as the, uh, rightfully so, the community, the public is concerned, even afraid for their own properties. At the same token, us engineers that are visiting those properties have been asked the questions, hey, I want to make sure that my building is safe. 
we also have to answer that question and knowing and understanding why this has happened on this particular building is definitely something that we are looking forward uh, uh, so we can answer those questions in the future. So for now, we are all waiting for those professionals that are hired by, I guess, various parties doing investigation on the collapse to, to give us maybe not uh, one def definitive answer, but maybe get us closer to what event or events most likely have contributed or caused this to happen. Mr. Collar, it's just an impressive view and it's just a devastating situation and you just can't uh, just get enough of all these uh, pictures that we're seeing. And it's just something that hits everyone in the community. Now I'm going to refer here to an interview that you had recently where you said that the key element of this investigation is in that rubble, mm -hmm. in those columns and in the state of the structural elements. Why is this key element? Well, the simple answer to that is uh, the collapse of the structure that happens in such a manner, in such, in such fashion, is uh, uh, most likely associated with some level of collapse of uh, support structures such as columns, potentially some beams. Uh, and in order for the building to collapse like this, most likely those would have to be on a lower floors, which means they would be buried in all of that uh, uh, material and all of that uh, construction debris. So uh, the solution, the solution, the, the, the answer to the question, or part of the answer to the question why this happened is going to be uh, uh, found, in my opinion, once they clean all of that and, and, and be able to observe the condition of remaining portion of the structure, if there are some, and even if they are not, that's also going to be a part of the answer why there are not and what has caused this. So the only way they can get to some uh, uh, signs and some indication as to why this has happened is one after they uncovered this, which I believe they already done, uh, uh, and that information of the remaining pieces of the structure on the ground will give them some indication as to what has collapsed, potentially what has collapsed first. How did it collapse? Uh, in, in structural engineering, uh, you know, we have certain lines of breakage, meaning if something breaks in a certain pattern, we know whether that's a result of one type of a force or a different type of stress or something like that. And uh, the, the people investigating this, the professionals investigating this, if they are able to see that and find that, that's going to give them a portion of the answer uh, uh, as to what has led to this. Now, these are the mes methods that are being used to determine in these tragical events what have or what could have have taken place and find an answer. Is there ever going to be an answer at some point? We definitely hope so. We definitely hope so that there is going to be an answer. The, the state of, of remains of the building is such that, as you can see, that this is all uh, one big rubble, uh, 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 which is uh, unlikely for, you know, when there are so many examples of building, well, luckily so not so many examples of building or various structures collapsing, but there are some. And uh, m most likely, you will always find, you know, pieces of structure hanging and, and, and even although broken, but still being able to see lines of breakage, as I was explaining before. Here, you, you, you don't see anything. Here, it's all two, you know, one big pile of, 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 of debris, which makes this uh, that more challenging in terms of how we're going to find that answer. But we hope so, we will. How old is this building in particular? I believe that this building was approaching its 40-year anniversary or somewhere uh, around there. Now, has there been any evidence that they had taken notice on keeping up with the structure and maintaining it? Uh, the only answer I can give you to that is what is available in the media and what is available on the City of Surfside's website when they, they, where they started putting the available documents and information pertaining to this uh, uh, property. What they uh, provided there is that there was information by uh, uh, engineering groups uh, dating uh, from 2018 
that they performed inspections of the property and that they found certain, you know, uh, spalling uh, concrete and corroded rebar and some cracking and there were some issues with waterproofing membranes. So based on documentation we have as of 2018, they had some notion that there are some issues in the building. Uh, quite recently, probably several weeks before the, the collapse of the building, the engineers and the contractors were in the property, on the property, basically uh, trying to uh, come up with a cost of, of construction and provide proposals for uh, repairs on the property. So the building was working towards uh, correcting some of those issues that were, that were observed. Yeah, that would be my next question. If this incident could have been prevented, how important that is? Oof, in order to answer that, you know, we would know, we have to know what has caused it uh, because we don't know the cause. Uh, I, you know, as a general statement, I would like to say, yes, we could have prevented this, but that's a very uh, a broad statement until we know what, what, uh, uh, what has caused it. What I can say on that uh, notion, and that is something that a lot of buildings are asking nowadays, well, how do we make sure that our buildings are safe and how do we prevent what has happened to Surfside? Uh, uh, and, you know, us as engineers sitting on one hand and looking at these buildings from a professional aspect and people living in them are looking there from a completely different aspect. And that is, I just want to make sure it's safe. I, I don't know whether it's a column or a beam or a slab. I, I, we don't care about that. We just want to make sure it's safe and sound. Uh, what I, can, what I tell all my clients and what I tell people when they ask me this question is, although we don't know what has caused the collapse of the building, what we can and should do is eliminate the things that we know we can do. And that is for sure maintain the property. Whether those cracks from 2018 and, and those things had anything to do with the collapse and to what extent is yet to be determined. But on, on, on our buildings, when I say our, I mean buildings uh, in general, what can be done is let's eliminate that. That's something we can do. We can, uh, if we see that there is a problem with the building, let's address it sooner than later. Let's go through a, a regular pain cycles and, and waterproofing cycles and roofing cycles. So let's eliminate and protect the build. Let's eliminate what's what's wrong and, and protect the building, so we don't have that piece of the puzzle in our buildings whatsoever. So we eliminate one thing that we are actually responsible for. I want to thank you for being a voice and bringing calm and ease to a lot of people that are living in buildings today, especially in our community. Now, I want to ask you about the infrastructures and the visits of inspectors or people that are professionals of the industry as yourself to visit these sites and just to make sure that things are correctly in good place as far as structure is concerned. Well, yes, uh, for most part, the there are two layers of inspections that I, I would call them that way. One is the uh, people, you know, hiring us as independent professional engineers uh, uh, to help them assist with these things. And there is a, uh, you know, city inspectors, people that are uh, hired by local governments that perform inspections as well. So uh, what my recommendation, and, and obviously I'm biased in this, but my recommendation is every time you have a structural problem on the building. And when I say structural problem, you have a cracking, exposed rebar, spalling, and things like that. Do not try to, to uh, repair it yourself. Always uh, ask for an opinion of a professional engineer uh, so you understand, uh, most importantly, the causation, why this cracking is happening. Why is this happening? Is this what I would call a wear and tear or exposure to element be being environmentally where we are, salt, uh, rain, water, and sun, uh, or is this something that uh, has more a deeper meaning that can be way more serious, such as a structural stress that has something to do with the way structure was built or loaded or designed or something like that, or combination of those. So 
having a professional assisting you in maintenance of your building, in my opinion, is, is uh, paramount in making sure that your building is properly protected. What, what can happen is that you see a crack somewhere and the only thing, the only way you are looking at that crack is aesthetics. So let's just put something in that crack, paint over it so we don't look at it anymore. But the crack remains behind that, you know, surface and continues doing whatever it was doing before and the causation is still undetermined. But if somebody has looked at that crack and determined that that can be having more problematic uh, uh, effect on the building if it's not properly repaired, uh, uh, then you are basically hiding the problem and you're letting that continue to work behind the scenes that can have much uh, a deeper uh, a, 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 and problematic effect on the building. Now, my question is, regarding the structures, homes differ from buildings, and how is that going to affect the new structures that are coming up? I think that's a question that a lot of people are asking. Uh, homes uh, do differ from buildings. I mean, you say homes, single-family homes or, or, or townhomes. To a slight, uh, 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 there's a slight difference. Uh, the biggest difference is the the type of material and type of structural systems we are using uh, for those. But some of the, you know, um, more luxurious and bigger single family homes can be very challenging for both design and construction, uh, uh, even more challenging than the buildings themselves. Uh, so the design and construction of the buildings, in my opinion, um, we may see uh, uh, some uh, more stringent requirements, but in my opinion, the things are not going to change drastically there. Uh, right now, we have a very uh, good, very stri strict uh, uh, codes in, in, in Florida when it comes to design of the buildings, and that is a consequence of the area where we live. We have hurricanes, and we always design everything and prepare ourselves for those hurricanes. So as such, we do have good laws and good codes. Construction is also uh, something that is being uh, controlled and checked by either uh, private provider engineers or by uh, local municipalities. I think that the emphasis uh, from now on is going to be on maintenance. And I think that the biggest changes coming are going to be how do we ensure that existing structures are properly maintained, are safe and sound. That's whether it's one level or various levels, it doesn't matter when it comes to structural for, buildings? For most part, it doesn't. Design is design. So basically, somebody gives you a, 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 a structure and says, I need you to design me a single story or a 40 story building. The, the difference is that the size of those columns and beams and, and layout is going to be somewhat different and you, know, you can use different materials. Uh, but you still have to go through the design. Single family home and a single story house still has to be designed to res resist hurricane winds and the gravitational loads from the roof and everything else. Same as a 40 story building. There is a, again, the, the sizes of the elements are going to be substantially different. But the design going into that, obviously, is going to be a little bit easier because I only have one one floor, yes. but uh, 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 it's going to be pretty much the same procedure, same process. Yes, you're still under a roof, so we need to be cautious. You, uh, you have to make sure that nothing collapses, that yes. everybody who is in, whether it's a single family, single story, two story, three story, or a 40 story building, everybody is equally protected. Mr. Collar, what is the 40, 50 year security process about? So, uh, as I mentioned uh, before, 40 and 50 and 60 and so on and so forth is the process that was put in place in Miami-Dade and Broward counties to ensure that buildings are maintained. And the uh, legislature has put that at a 40-year mark and then every 10 years after that. Basically, uh, it is a certification process where an engineer, licensed engineer or an architect in the state of Florida uh, performs an evaluation of the property and uh, renders that property safe uh, uh, for its present use and occupancy or it doesn't. Basically means repairs required or repairs not required. Uh, any building that does regular and proper maintenance, the 40 year is nothing more 
than just an engineer going, inspecting, and filling up a report saying everything is good. Buildings that do not perform regular maintenance, that have structural problems, most of the times that process becomes what we call a capital improvement project. That's why you hear, and even now on the news, you hear people, oh, the building was assessed for $10 million, the building was assessed for $15 million, the building was assessed for all of that. When, when that's what happens when your buildings, you know, don't follow and prepare themselves. So the 40 year is basically put in place so they can, the, the municipality can catch that building at that point and say, okay, no more defer maintenance, no more not doing anything. Now you have to fix everything. Now, you mentioned earlier before we went on air the importance of keeping up with the structure in the outside, referring to about eight to ten years. Should that be done um, from the owners, not worrying about the demand locally by laws to keep up with the building, but rather take hands-on and make sure that your building is always in good standing? That would be ideal approach. That that would be great. Uh, it's a rule of thumb, in, 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 at least in coastal area in, in Florida, that you should paint your building every eight to ten years. Basically, that is the the lifespan of a paint or exterior paint is available right now. And also, from aesthetic purposes, you want to make sure that your building outside is clean and nice and so on. So, if you do painting every eight to ten years and do a little bit extra at that time, and that is hire an engineer to assess the condition of the property and tell you if you have anything else to address while painting the building, such as a little bit stucco problem here, a little bit of concrete restoration here and there, you will be able to go through every uh, single paint cycle with minimal uh, 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 concrete restoration and, and other structural problems, which means when the time comes for your 40 or 50 or any other certification we put in place, you will be set to go with no extra work. Uh, I like to make that analogy with uh, with uh, oil change. There is nobody nobody tells you you have to change the oil every three thousand or five thousand miles, so on and so forth. There is a well, basically they tell you in a manual, but you're not obligated. You don't have to change it every three thousand. You can say, okay, I'll, hey, look, my car drives nice, and I'm at five thousand miles, and it still drives nice. I'm at 10,000 miles and it still drives nice. I'm at 15,000 miles and then at 16,000 miles, I have to change the whole engine because my oil doesn't work anymore. But because the engine was running, I didn't pay attention. I didn't do my preventative or proactive approach. Same goes for the building. Your building may be good at 10 years and you say, oh, it looks good. I don't need to do anything. 15 years, it still looks good. 20 years and then at 25, we have a $15 million assessment. Better to do it seven to ten years, and then you basically, most likely, will never get to the point of a fifteen million dollar assessment. Mr. Collar, that's a great advice. What else can you tell the public uh, that could bring them awareness and promptness in looking at their building and making sure that everything is running well? Uh, well, obviously, the proper maintenance, how to do a proper maintenance. I think that there is one tool that some people use, some people don't. Uh, uh, in my opinion, a reserve study is a very useful tool for condo and HOAs uh, to be on the schedule, on a lookout for certain things on their buildings and how to maintain them. We spend a lot of time talking about the exterior of the building, which is paint, which is uh, a stucco and concrete. However, uh, the big part of the exterior of the building is often neglected, and that is roofing and waterproofing. They are the key, key elements on horizontal surfaces keeping the water from going down into your structure. So, reserve study is something that helps associations understand the lifespan of various systems in their building and keeps them on schedule, even if they uh, don't know anything about the building, if they look at the reserve study and the reserve study says waterproofing should be replaced in five years, you are now on a lookout and you say, okay, now we know that waterproofing is reaching the end of its lifespan. We should start preparing for a waterproofing project or let's start inspecting the waterproofing a little bit more frequent. Let's see if we have more water intrusion in the garage. Let's see if we have water intrusion in the 
same goes for the roofing in the penthouse units and so on and so forth. So reserve study is a very useful tool. The problem with the um, reserve study is, you know, uh, is a financial uh, impact to it. And, uh, and I tell people, even if you don't uh, want to have reserves, have somebody do that reserve for you, not the financial aspect, but that aspect of the condition of your different systems and telling you when you should replace them. So you have a map, you have a road map in front of you telling you pay attention to paint, pay attention to roof, pay attention to waterproofing and so on and so forth. Is there a difference between a tenant and an owner of an apartment in a building complex? Should they both be concerned? Should they both receive reports or analysis of how the structure, the building uh, is being conducted? Uh, or is that too much? Well, that's more of a legal slash administration question. You know, the owner is somebody who owns the unit and a tenant who somebody presumably leases the unit from that owner. Uh, in, in my opinion, they are both, they both should be entitled to see the condition of the building where they live or own and, and you know, act accordingly. Uh, I'm sure there are other reasons why one wouldn't like to see, you know, the other to see th those things. But in general, uh, I'm a proponent that, uh, you know, you, you should be informed about the property where you live and you should have the right to know what is the condition. Uh, ultimately, that is what your property where you live. So why, why wouldn't you be informed about it? Very important because a lot of people have that question and they don't know what to do. Should they do something about it or should they stay still and just keep an eye on it? But it's good to talk about this because it gives them idea and it also promotes the owners to keep their building in good standing. Correct, correct. And, and that's why I said, uh, uh, you know, ideally speaking, and we always, uh, especially when, when we talk in the aftermath of some horrific uh, 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 event, uh, I there is a tendency for all of us to forget that we live in a real world. And, you know, in an ideal world, this would never happen. We would have done everything timely. And But we all know we are not perfect and we don't do things always the right way. And there is sometimes a delay, uh, justifiable or not. So in the real world, uh, we should strive to get there uh, and we should definitely work on that, but it's going to take a lot of work for, you know, on all of our behalf. And just to bring closure to our interview, I'm sure there's a lot of people with many, many resources of questions. Hopefully we've answered the right ones for this moment in time. The building had to be demolitioned. Why was that important? and the building that surround the area, how does that affect them? Uh, why the building had to be demo demolished? Uh, the, the most direct answer to that is, uh, mo why the building had to be demolished at that particular moment? First of all, uh, based on the you know, reports they were out there, there were uh, indications that there is a movement in that standing portion of the building, which they didn't know whether and how dangerous it is. And at that time, there was a tropical storm coming towards Florida, and that area was in the cone. So they didn't want to leave anything to chance because if the tropical storm, knowing that that structure may be unstable and a tropical storm hitting that portion of the structure, then that structure could collapse in an uncontrolled way which means it could fall on any adjacent property. So uh, they had to demolish the structure in order to prevent that remaining portion potentially collapsing and damaging, destroying uh, other things around. Um, how does it affect the adjacent properties? Uh, this, this event has affected uh, not just adjacent properties, it affected all the properties, not just in Florida, uh, because we have offices in New Jersey, in New York, and in Washington, uh, they all received calls after this event, and their own buildings from their own states have nothing to do with Florida. Has have called them and said, "Hey, you, you heard what has happened. We need you to come to our buildings and make sure they are safe." And I think all of the buildings are uh, thinking the same way. Obviously, the the most adjacent buildings on both sides 
are, are, are more affected and they're going to continue to be a, a affected. Structurally speaking, uh, I'm not sure that there is a correlation between what has happened in Champlain Tower South and any adjacent structure. Uh, but again, let's wait for the results and then we'll see if there is any anything to be said about that. Mr. Caller, is that the Falcon Group task at this moment to be able to service everyone here in Florida and not only in Florida, in, in the United States or wherever people reach out to you? Well, that's ultimate goal. Uh, we are trying to service a, as many people as we you know, possibly, possibly can. Uh, our clients, uh, our, our goals since the collapse and, and one of the biggest tasks for us was basically to first go back to our existing clients and, and reassure them based on everything we know about their buildings or conduct additional inspections in their properties to come to that conclusion whether there is a problem or, or not. And, and uh, we've done that so far and we had as, as, as well as pretty much any other engineering outfit in, in, in Florida or in South Florida has, I'm pretty sure uh, for the past month or so or two months has been inundated with those requests and those and those calls. And it's going to take some time for all of us to get to those buildings and, and hopefully give them the good news. And I'll tell you, not all the news we are delivering are good news. We have several of our properties where we are working where uh, emergency measures had to be put in place uh, to uh, address some of the uh, more problematic uh, uh, structural uh, parts of the building. So uh, what, if anything, can be good what, with what has happened, it definitely has put everybody on high alert and uh, refocused attention uh, from maybe not some so important things onto making sure our building is safe and sound first and investing in that. And then let's talk about enhancements and in, in, in aesthetic improvements. Wow. We want to thank you from OVM Radio, OVM TV for coming today and for answering these questions that are so vital, so important for people to listen to and to understand further, especially the Hispanic community in all communities. But we especially want to inform them so they can be aware of what's going on. We need to all, all of us, uh, join in in the protection for everyone. We want to thank you once again. And if you have any information you want to share about how to contact your firm uh, or any telephone numbers that you can provide to our audience, you're welcome to do so. Sure. First of all, thank you very much for having me here. Thank you for allowing me to, to share my point of view. Uh, I apologize that my Spanish is not so good that I cannot deliver this message in Spanish. I'll work on it and, and hopefully okay, uh, that sounds good. <laughs> we can do that uh, uh, next time. Uh, uh, we are at thefalcongroup.us. That's our website as well. Uh, I think that's the best resource how people can, can uh, you know, reach out to us either to our website or through you know, Facebook, um, Instagram and all of those uh, fancy social media things. Uh, we, we usually work word to mouth and, and that's how our clients uh, know about us. But again, uh, reach out to us uh, and we'll try to see how we can help you. Thankfully, we have all that information and we're going to share that through our social media outlets as well, our website as well. So everyone will be fully informed. Thank you. We want to thank you. We want to welcome you to come back and continue the conversation. Any information that you gather along the way, because I'm sure that you're going to be facing a lot of different things and issues. And hopefully one day um, you'll have the answers to many of those questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. It's been wonderful. And we do have a lot of information for you that we have in store for you. We see you next time on sharing your vision. God bless you. Bye-bye.